Hello and welcome back to the Mirror Football YouTube channel. I'm Conor Bromley and I'm joined by Portuguese football experts Sebastião Sousa Pinto to discuss the imminent appointment of Ruben Amarim at Manchester United. We are recording on Thursday morning, so by the time you listen to this, Amarim may well officially be the new Manchester United manager. Sebastião, um, I suppose first things first, what do you think Manchester United can expect from Ruben Amarim? Yeah, first of all, thank you for, for the invite. Uh, obviously, it's a great opportunity for me to be here. And uh, I think we can have a great chat about Ruben Amarim. Uh, it's a great manager. Uh, I think many United will find uh, a manager with a big personality, charisma as well. Uh, obviously, everyone has to be on the same boat uh, to everything to go well, obviously, uh, in every case. <laughs> um Amorim will not um, like players that don't run for the club, that don't play for the badge, um, that goes against his ideas. Uh, I have two examples. One, Fatal, that is that plays in Leicester City, that he played, obviously, yesterday, a big match uh, at Old Trafford. Um, you have another case that plays... Also in Leicester, that is Islam Slimani. I don't know if you if you know him. Uh, he played at Sporting years ago, then came back to Sporting with Ruben Amorim, had an argue with with him, and uh, Sporting terminated his contract and he left the club. So the so Man United uh, directors have to be uh, in the same uh, boat as Ruben Amorim because if he argues with some player and he wants him out, uh, the, the club has to to let the player out because otherwise. Uh, you have a toxic, a toxic uh, dressing room, and it will, it will be not good for Ruben Amorim, obviously. Do you think you know Manchester United is such a high-profile job, and obviously Sporting is you know one of the biggest jobs in football as well. But Manchester United, arguably the biggest club in world football, certainly in the top two or three. Do you think Ruben Amorim has the personality to deal with that sort of job? And you know we know that. Jose Mourinho has been his mentor. And we know that Jose Mourinho has been in big jobs before. Do you think he will look to him for guidance, you know, to help him come into such a, a huge uh, role? Yeah, for sure. For sure, they will speak. Uh, for sure, they will speak. I'm, I don't have doubts about it. Uh, obviously, because Jose has some things to talk about Man United, players that, still, uh, that are still at the club. So, obviously, Ruben will talk to him about that and his experience in Man United. He was in Man United in 2018, so maybe he, he grabbed some some points uh, of the club. He knows already uh, who the club is. So um, I think he has the personality to 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 win games, to, to make a, a good work. But obviously, as I said, everyone has to be on the same boat and they have to listen to his ideas. They have to respect him. Uh, until obviously uh, the manager doesn't respect the players, but until then, uh, obviously they have to respect uh, Ruben Amorim and his ideas because uh, that's the only way to win games. Um, when he went to Sporting, uh, probably you already you already know, but uh, they didn't win the league in the last twenty years. Then he came and is making his fifth season uh, at Sporting, and they are going for the third title in five years. So pretty amazing. Uh, it changed. The idea of sporting uh, in a in, like in a crazy way, uh, everyone laughed at sporting to when they say they were going to win titles, and then he came and they won the title. Then won last year, and then this year they have a pretty good team. They changed completely in every aspect of the club. They brought uh, really good, really good players, and they they uh, they kept them uh, this season, and they are going. Uh, they are doing a really good job this season. I want to talk a little bit about tactics. Um, Amarim's known for sort of a 3-4-3, playing three at the back. Do you expect he'll try and implement that at Manchester United straight away? Or do you think he's more likely to kind of continue with what they currently have and slowly change things and eventually maybe next season change to his more familiar tactical setup? So it's a, it's a great point. Um I think in in the long term he will implement the three four three for sure. I don't think this season uh, he can implement that straight away. Obviously, because it's completely different tactic. Uh, Man United, I think, didn't play, uh, haven't played in in their history with the three four three. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but so 
yeah, and I don't think the the Man United squad has the players to to implement that style straight away. So probably they have to go in the January transfer market to one or two signings to implement that style. Um, and I don't think they he, he can implement the the same style that he implements at Sporting in the Premier League because it's a completely different league. Uh, here in Portugal, most of the lower teams against Sporting Porto, Benfica. Uh, play all at the back so they just defend and try not to concede and score a goal in the counter-attack um, I don't see many teams playing like that in the Premier League it's it's all um, it's all difficult to 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 make a prediction because obviously Man City can lose against the the better the, the worst team in the league and Man United as well so obviously uh, it's a different league and obviously different tactics that you will try to implement for sure in terms of playing style, I think you know most Manchester United fans won't be too similar, uh, too familiar. Sorry, with how sport and play. How does Amberham set his teams up in terms of you know are they a passing team? Are they a team that works well in transition on counter attacks? Um, are they strong defensively, and is that their sort of foundation? How should Manchester United fans expect a Ruben Amarim team to set up? So obviously they they like to play a lot uh, from the back uh, with, with their three center halves. Um, they like to play from the from the back and they like to get uh, the pressure on them to play uh, a bit like Man City. Uh, you have the example on the last Champions League game. Uh, I saw a video that uh, they they were they weren't pressing Man City and they when they pressed Man City scored a goal. So it's pretty much it. Um, they create a lot of chances to their front three. Um, mainly for the striker, as you see now with Jokeres scoring loads of goals. I think it, it will benefit, obviously, Hoyland and Zuxi uh, at the front. You can see that probably the Ligt, uh, Bruno, um, I don't know, other players, the Ligt, it's a center, center half and probably had more shots this season than Rasmus, which is crazy. <laughs> uh, so uh, with the Ruben Amarin style, you can expect creation of opportunities, clear-cut uh, opportunities, opportunities to the to the striker in a front three. So I think it will have more goals and more goals. Um, you can expect goals, obviously, and a strong defense because uh, this year in the league they only conceded two goals uh, in the league and scored twenty-seven. So crazy stats. Yeah, Manchester United, I think, have only scored nine goals in the Premier League this season. So that's something they yeah. need to work on. Um, in Both terms five of yesterday. oh, sorry. Yes, but here yeah, in the Carabao Cup. Yeah, they've, they've done well in the Carabao Cup. They scored seven as yeah. well against Barnsley in a previous round. Um, how involved do you think he will be in the recruitment? Um, I think Manchester United are quite well known for being not the best in terms of transfers. Do you think Ruben Amarim will have a big say in recruitment? Do you think he will want to sign certain players? Um, or it's sporting as he been someone who trusted you know, the, the director of football or somebody else to recruit and he just focuses on coaching the actual team and, and managing the games? I think they have to, to as I said uh, many times in this, in this interview, uh, they have to be on the same boat. So uh, what I what I want to say uh, about that is uh, Ruben Amrin wants the players he wants uh, and not trusting the the directors of the, or the club. So... He will he will give a list of players that he wants, and the and the club has to bring them. Obviously, they have plan Bs and plan Cs. Obviously, if they can't uh, bring the the plan A, they go to plan B and uh, for them for them on. Um, and and he was like that uh, from the uh, from the beginning in Sporting. So he wants the player. He he has the player, and he has to be that way or should be that way in Man United because uh, Ruben Amorim wants uh, to be really um, active on that on the transfer market. So uh, the, he will be for sure in contact uh, every minute. Let's say like this with the directors of the club to to bring the the best players for for the for his system. And do you see him going to Sporting to sign players? You know, Victor Jokeres is a, a player that's obviously quite well known with uh, English football fans. He played for Coventry City in the Championship and did really well. Um, he's a player that's been linked to top clubs in Europe uh, sort of over the past summer. Do you see Manchester United going for players from Sporting? Do you think 
uh, Ruben Amram is likely to go back to Spawn to help improve this team. I think, f- firstly, you have to to check um, their status with the, with the manager because with all this uh, information going to the Portuguese to the sporting players uh, because of uh, of his departure, uh, many players stayed at the club in the summer because they believed in Ruben Amorim's uh, project and so they stayed another season. Now he's leaving uh, in mid-season, so uh, I don't know, you have to, to check. Ruben Amorim obviously will have a feeling of the players that, that are not frustrated with him. Um, see, looking at the to the sporting squad, I think Gonzalo Inácio, the center half, uh, would be a great fit for them. Obviously playing with a back three, uh, left-footed centre-back, um, obviously, you have uh, Lisandro Martinez, the lift, uh, Yoro. Um, only Martinez uh, left footed, but um, Gonzalo Inácio could be a great option. Uh, Victor Jokeres is a player, obviously, that is mentioned a lot. Uh, I don't think Man United uh, would buy him unless Rasmus or Zagzi le- leaves the club, because otherwise, I don't see uh, how how the deal would would go through because. You paid uh, 80 million for Rasmus and 50 million for Zuxi, and now paying a lot uh, for Jokeres as well. In January, 100 million euros, unless uh, you wait until the summer and then you see. Um, because otherwise, Jokeres, I just see them, I just see him leaving to Arsenal or Barcelona at the end of the season because uh, other clubs uh, already have a, a great striker and would not pay the fee that uh, Sporting wants. In, in terms of backroom staff, do you think Ruben Amarim is likely to take um, the full complement of staff he has at Sporting, or do you think he's more likely to fit into what Manchester United currently have? How, how do you see that playing out? I see him bringing a lot of uh, a lot of uh, people to, to Man United. Um, scientists, obviously, his assistant coaches. He will bring uh, the, the 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 people that. Brought him to this stage, uh, I'm sure, and that's part of the negotiation. Man United will pay one million for the assistance. Um, so uh, yeah, that's it. And before I let you go, um, I just wanted to ask how long you believe it will take for Ruben Amarim to really get this Manchester United team going. When he first went into Sporting, was it a smooth transition, and did Sporting almost within the first few months look a better outfit, or? Did it take time? You know, does he need eighteen months? You know, two or three transfer windows to really build this team and get it to where Manchester United fans expect the club to be, which is contending for the major honors in Europe. So when he when he went to Sporting, uh, he also uh, came in mid season. Uh, he was at Braga, the fourth be- uh, known uh, club in Portugal. He won a title there, uh, li- like a Carabao Cup, but in Portugal. Um, the players felt that he, they had they they were creating something special. Then Sporting came in, paid his release clause, the same as happening in with Man United, and he, then he left. Um, and in his first season, he actually uh, finished um, higher, uh, sorry, above um, Braga. Uh, he finished fourth uh, in the league, um, and and then uh, next season uh, they won the title. So. Probably uh, this season would be like a, a, a season to to experiment things, um, to see how the the team goes, uh, buy one or two players, uh, sell another two or three players, and then next season go uh, go all in. And I think it will be like that with Ruben Amorim, unless obviously he has the players to to actually uh, implement that his style right now. Okay, well, thank you, Sebastio, for joining us this morning. It's been great to get some insight into Ruben Amarim and hopefully uh, he can get Manchester United turning in the right direction because it's been a a good struggle for Manchester United over the last 10 or 11 (laughs) years since Sir Alex Ferguson left. So thanks for joining me this morning. Thanks, everyone, for listening. And we'll uh, catch you all next time.